Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good evening, everybody. I'm uh, glad to start uh, today uh, the new presentation about uh, patient safety. It's one of the series uh, that the Patient Safety, uh, safety Center is doing in Saudi Arabia. It is a very active uh, center now. And our concern is uh, to make uh, our uh, patients' atmosphere and environment healthy and safe. Um, and uh, not to go further, because I don't want to take from the Dr. Thamer time, it's always a pleasure introducing my colleague, my friend, and uh, honestly, he's uh, my model in pharmacy, because he's facing a lot of challenges, and still he's surviving and doing a good job. Um, he is an associate professor in the health outcome. He is a pharmacoepidemiologist and a pharmacoeconomist consultant. Uh, he was the dean of the pharmacy college and higher university, and um, it's it's a long actually uh, biography to introduce. Um, and uh, I would uh, be honored to say that he's our representative in the WHO. And the most important thing for us is that as a pharmacist, he is really presenting us in a good way, in a good uh, form, uh, in the kingdom and outside. Um, he's our ambassador. Um, in um, reaching to the uh, healthcare practitioners and telling them the importance of the patients and the patients' rights and safety. Dr. Thamer, uh, please uh, start your presentation talking about patient safety in Saudi Arabia, academic curriculum, current situations and future insights. Uh, during that, please, our audience, if you have any questions, just put it in the question bar so we can take it in the end of uh, the presentation and enjoy with us the flight with Dr. Thamer and his uh, knowledgeable presentations. Go ahead, Dr. Thamer. Thank you so much, Dr. Fakhar. And uh, I'm really honored that you are uh, presenting me uh, today. Um, and um, again, same thanks for your efforts in the area of pharmacy and especially in cardiology uh, area. That's, that's really doing a great job with that. So it's really an honor for me to be with you today uh, to share with you uh, some of the experience that we have here in Saudi Arabia. And I'll touch some of the point uh, in, in, in worldwide. Um, it's, 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 it's important when you talk about the patient safety and especially in academic. Um, uh, the reason why is that uh, everything after or during the work it will be based on the what you have done or what you have taken during the academic year. And this is really important to think about it. And this is uh, important to, to consider. Uh, I know we have different uh, people from different countries. And this is really important when you apply that uh, to apply it in your country. Uh, we, we all know patient safety is really something uh, immature when we talk about worldwide. So don't surprise that if even if you're in your institution or in your country, where, where, wherever you are, uh, that there is no practice, not, not a lot of practice in patient safety, which is normal. So you can start from the uh, from the beginning to apply everything related to patient safety, either from academic point of view or practice or regulation or anything that you would think you'd be part. And also I advise those who really have a say in, in your country to talk about patient safety. So this is my name. So I'll be happy, this is my email. So I'll be happy to get any question uh, for anyone from you. And I'll share with you my later, my also my email and also my Twitter account. To, if you have any question, I'll be happy to 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 be to be to, to reply to you. So this is Saudi Arabia, and uh, this is in the map. And we Saudi Arabia is really big land, uh, and 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 I, I showed two maps: maps Saudi Arabia itself and map we where we are in the in the world. And if you see in the map, we are really in the heart of the world. So we have really a great location, and we have a lot of. Um, investments, especially when we talk about patient safety, when we talk about health, and this is one of really uh, advantages that uh, we have it here in Saudi Arabia that we are uh, we are investing a lot in health uh, to protect our population, either by like the Ministry of Health, or of course by, by the government at the beginning, but when we talk about Ministry of Health and all the health sectors within Saudi Arabia are all of them already doing doing great job. 
when we talk about patient safety on health in general. Is that enough? Of course not, because we're really aiming for more and more uh, to ultimately have uh, a really good health environment in all health sector that we are having in Saudi Arabia. As I mentioned, Saudi Arabia is really big land. Uh, we talk about over 2 million uh, kilometers square, um, and we are surrounded by different countries and also by the seas and by Gulf. So it's really one of the largest and fastest growing population in Gulf countries. So we are move like we are increasing very rapidly. We talk about 15% from like within 10, 15 years, which is really a huge number. Uh, and there are many reasons for, for that. So recently by 2000, um, um, uh, 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 2021, we, with the, the population bear the Department of Statistics and Information, uh, we are reaching our almost 34 million uh, people and uh, almost 19, 19 million of them are Saudi nationals. And if you want to get more data, you can go directly to the to the uh, to the this link or even to the authority of stats in here in Saudi Arabia website. We are a young population. And this is one of the things uh, that is really uh, challenging because when you say one well, young population, that's mean you will have more efforts to, to, to invest more in health. And one of them is patient safety, because these young population, they will ultimately grow and become adult or become elderly. And as we know, elderly usually are combined with uh, many um, um, chronic diseases. These will have different procedure, different surgery, different medications. And all of these are associated with, uh, with a patient safety problem, with the incidence problem. So we almost quarter of population, we are younger this than 15 years, almost uh, 25%. And we go break down more. Uh, we almost 70% of the population are less than 64, which is again, we are young population less than 34 years or 60 percent so again this will need more investment and this is a lot of challenges that we have when we compare male uh, to female because we know the females uh, and male they each each gender they have their own um, uh, needs when we talk about the healthcare and also the patient safety as percentage male to female female we have a 75 to 43 percent and this is in general and the reason why because we have many people from outside, especially males, come to my country to work here and help uh, the, uh, help us on many things. And thanks to them for that. And most of them are male. We also have female, but the majority of these male. That's why we have more males uh, than, as general population. But when we go to the Saudi uh, gender difference, we're almost similar, like 50% uh, to 50%. We have a little bit increase in the female gender. And when we talk about Saudi uh, gender, but uh, when it's like a percent is almost 50 to 50 percent, which is again, this is one of the really good thing that both genders are really um, working together for the uh, to 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 make sure of the health of our population and to assure the patient safety uh, uh, at the end. This is just just a table or indicators, uh, and the reason why because there are a lot of information and. When you have data, and this is one of the messages to you, when you have data, this will really help you a lot to, to plan, to, 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 uh, to design a program for your country. This is one of the things that really need to start with to, 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 to when you get like more data to help you to plan for your especially health indicator and patient safety. This is really one of the things that really, really good to, to, to consider uh, in, your, in your country, in your place. And also, this is another good figures that will help you to understand where are the population uh, in your in your country. And this important when you talk also about academic and education. When you see most of your people are young, when you see most of them like in the uh, high school, um, university, or college years, or even after that a little bit, that means we really need to invest in education. When you talk about health and, and, and patient safety. And this is, you know, you see that's the male when they increase and female 
when they uh, they uh, they increase. And again, in the right, in my right, uh, we have the the male, and in the left, that's female. The the the, the red. In the right, also this is all the population. And the left is the Saudi population. We see Saudi almost 50, 50 percent. Uh, and this is again one of the the advantage that we have it here in, in Saudi Arabia. As health expenditure, we really invest a lot again uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the health in a specific, and we see that the, the the expenditure by the government is really increasing, and also when you see the the gray color. Lion, we found that also the private healthcare is really increasing, and we are expecting the the role of private sector to increase because of the like the the the, the Saudi government going or the health uh, sector is really Minister of Health going for for health insurance to ensure all population in Saudi Arabia. We know that the the healthcare system in Saudi is social system. That's been paid by the government. But there is also intent to pay by, to, to have it paid by the government, but also with a good quality of care. And this is one of the one of the um, uh, like pillar of the uh, Saudi Vision 2030 to have really good care to our population, very good quality of care, uh, also good access to the care. So that you will see uh, like more of the role of the private uh, insurance. So I would like to ask you. I'll, I'll pause a little bit. And I would like to have your feedback. I would just want to see what you think uh, of the common diseases. Um, and, and, uh, let's talk about worldwide. Uh, which, what is the most common disease cause burden in the health, health system? So which one is really affecting burden and like economically burden and also uh, humanistic burden? Is it respiratory infection or COVID-19? Uh, disease or like corona infection or cardiovascular disease. So please select a one choice and let me see the poll. I'll give 30 seconds. So, or maybe we have a huge number of participants, which is excellent. So please take your time, select one and uh, let, let, let's see uh, the vote. So I'll give you one minute for that. Okay, I think this is less than one minute. So, uh, majority says uh, respiratory infection, um, followed by um, cardiovascular disease, and then COVID-19. Interesting that not people thinking that COVID-19 is really most burden. So I would ask my, my technical colleagues that if can, they can uh, like allow for more time for the next poll so that all people uh, participate. Actually, this is a depend on the each country. Some country are like respiratory and some country like cardiovascular. But in general, let's talk in general, cardiovascular diseases and diabetes really has huge uh, impact worldwide. We are the same here in Saudi Arabia. We have really, a, we have a huge burden on cardiovascular. It's good that Dr. Fakhar, who is really specialized in, in heart as one member of the Saudi Heart Association, she's really this area of expertise that is really burden when we talk about cardiovascular as disease itself, as the also complication of disease, the, the, the treatment, the therapy, either by medication or even other ways of therapy is really causing burden and both economically and also in our patient. In addition to that, uh, and that's like cardiovascular disease, diabetes, which is ischemic heart disease, uh, the first one, followed by stroke, low, lower respiratory tract infection, and road traffic accident. And the problem that road traffic accidents is really one of the um, leading cause of death here in, in Saudi Arabia. Someone asks, so why are you mentioning that here? Because all of these can be preventable events with some technique that we could do uh, us as healthcare professional and people who's really in patient safety. For example, low traffic accidents, when you see the, the, uh, the seat belt, when the back of the seat belt, this will reduce a lot of death if you use it wisely. And all of these, again, patient safety is not related to health only, but also it's also could affect by other sectors uh, other than health. But again, health, we have, we have really a big uh, uh, role in that. So I'll talk a little bit about Saudi Arabia because I'm talking about the, um, the implication of, of uh, patient safety in academic. And 
there, there really a, a great advancement in the education here in Saudi Arabia within the like two decades. Um, if you see like, because before 2000, um, uh, we only have one, um, uh, like, uh, uh, like one university or like two, three universities before then that's imagine. So like you have three, four, four universities before 2000. And after 2001, 2004, we'll talk about three to up to uh, nine universities. After 2005, we jump to have almost 37 government universities. And this is the same for the private. Private, we have like five before 2000. And this again, increased to almost 15 private universities and 22 private colleges. So a lot of investment and in education. And this will be a burden on people working in education, including myself. That's because these colleges, they really need to have a good, uh, good um, curriculum. Building curriculum is really one of the important parts. Having curriculum, and especially in health colleges, is really need to cover most of the important uh, system. Of course, they will focus on physiology, anatomy, microbiology, um, pharmacology, um, therapeutics, talk about surgery, science, and et cetera, nursing, and et cetera. So all these really, but they don't really think of think that they thought it's really fancy, like patient safety. A lot of academicians, they thought patient safety is fancy because they don't really know the value of, of patient safety. So it's just an example of the university that we have, King Saud, King Khalid, uh, we have King Faisal, Qasim, uh, King Abdul Aziz. And when I talk about the before two one, 2001, I was talking about King Saud and King Abdul Aziz. King Saud was the first one and the oldest one that you see a lot of people graduate from, from this university, including myself, Victor Fakhar, and a lot. Uh, but the new university talk about, um, for example, Taiba in Medina, Um al Quran Mecca, Najran, Al Jof, Taif. So all these consider a really a babies or new university that we have. We have Jama, University of Hail, we have the uh, King Saud, we have Jazan, Satam, and again, you see 2007, 2008, 2012, 2008. You see, all they came together. Uh, and this is again, we need we need to work more and more with that. And this is an example of the private either university and colleges, and really, really, really good university that we have. So when you see this five healthcare professional different specialty, you you will see that this is the like the patient safety curriculum guide face. So my. A question to you, and again, I would like to see to, to keep the uh, poll more time if possible from our colleagues at IT. Is what is the institution that responsible or produce patient safety curriculum guide? Is it WHO World Health Organization or the International Pharmaceutical Federation, which is responsible on education worldwide, FIP, or the European Health Colleges Federation, was also but in, in Europe? So please answer. Uh, one single one of them. Is it WHO? Is it FIP? Or is it ECP? Think and let me what do you think? I think that's a good time. Thank you, our colleagues. Okay, let's see. Wow. Oh, so all your bias toward the WHO because you know this information. Okay, and I like, we have almost 128. We have almost 600 people participated. So I would like, love to see more and more uh, uh, to see that. So yes, you're right, you're both right. That's excellent. So WHO is really responsible on the patient safety curriculum guide. I really, I really thank the WHO because they took this initiative and, and, and taking care of, of this part uh, because we really need to have a specific guide for us as academician to see, okay, we talk about patient safety, but where we should have, what the more competency we need, we need them. 
uh, how we build our curriculum around the patient safety. So this is really, really advantage. And also the good things, of course, yeah. let's go to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the website and you see all the, all the information there. And the good thing that they have the, um, um, the, uh, the, the different languages that is available or that are available in the in the website. We have Japanese, Chinese, Chekitan, etc. Of course, we don't have it in Arabic. And the reason that, because most yes. of the Arab countries that is really uh, um, to teach uh, the medicine or health in general in, 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 in English language. So that's why some are teaching in French, which is um, um, this is also one of the things that uh, the WHO is really working on that. So, uh, but again, if you want to different languages, you see it here, each 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 file. But again, it's all in in, in English. So it has two two parts. The first one is about teacher guide. So take it. This is talk about curriculum in general, how to build the curriculum, what the information you need to build in the curriculum, and this is really good for someone who's working in curriculum committee uh, with that. So the other the the other part is going technical or scientific information about the patient safety itself. What do you mean by patient safety? What do you mean by human factor? What do you mean to where we put this information as as uh, like human factors, uh, sorry, as, as uh, the criteria, as, as working as team player, as also what, uh, what do you mean by preventive error? Also, we're focusing going deep and deep here. We talk about the uh, the infection control, uh, patient safety, and also uh, medication safety. So all these all these part is really important as as a reference. <clears throat> sorry, as a reference for you uh, when you when you deal with the with the with the, with the uh, guidelines. So the question is. Uh, Patient safety curriculum should be applied to under, undergraduate studies only. Is it true or, or not? What do you think? It should be in, only in the clinical, in the in the undergraduate study. While you, while you're doing that, I'll just uh, mute the notification that you have. So please answer. Okay. So, almost 141 people replied to this. 70% um, they say false. 30% they say true. Should be only to the uh, to the uh, undergrad. It's actually it's yes. It's 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 important to be applied to undergrad studies, but also should be applied also to, uh, to graduates because in patient safety, there is difference uh, on the kind of level that we want to deliver to either our students or to either other healthcare professional when they are working. So it will be both on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, on the um, undergrad and postgrad. So the answer is false. So the question is how to integrate. So, okay, I have the guidelines. Uh, I have the book. I have the information. How to integrate the patient safety to your curriculum? There are different ways to do that. But before that, you really need to ask yourself some of the question. And this is really good to keep it uh, with you. The first one is how, the, how your curriculum is really structured. When I say the curriculum, for those who doesn't know what this curriculum is, curriculum is the structure of your study plan. So how many years, um, how many semesters you have, the, for example, the medicine or the pharmacy or the nursing, um, how many hours and all the, uh, what are the courses that you're teaching in your program. So how your, your, your uh, curriculum is really building, what is the structure of your curriculum? Uh, how many hours? Is it all curriculum or, 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 or new curriculum? Uh, what are the type of, of, of courses that you have? Some, these are some questions you really need to ask. I will tell you why. Also, the other question, when and where the curriculum are particular subject and topic taught that might lead themselves to inclusion of patient safety content. So what the courses that you are having now, 
that involve patient safety? Do you have a standalone course for patient safety? Or do you have it as a part of another course? Or you have it as elective? Or is it mandatory course? So all these questions also you need to ask yourself. Do you teach it, if you teach it, this, uh, the patient safety? Do you teach it in the first years or the, the last years? Because we know medicine, seven years, uh, including the internship, uh, pharmacy, uh, medicine and industry, seven years, pharmacy, six years, nursing, five years, or some five years and a half, and different. So all these are questions you need to ask yourself. Also, how are individual topic structure in terms of learning objective, delivery methods, and assessment methods? So within patient safety, we have different topics. For example, we have the surgery checklist. We have infection controls. We have also medication safety. So how... What, is, what are the ways of delivering these? Do you do really only using a uh, lecture? Do you use a practice? Do you have problem-based learning? Or what do you actually use? How is your curriculum delivered? And this is the same that I just mentioned. Who is responsible of delivering of the teaching? Are these people really expert in the part and the, what they're teaching? Or because it's part of the another class, uh, that's not. So these all these questions really need to think about it before adding the uh, patient, the the uh, the patient safety topics or course. There are different. I'm going to talk about and quickly about the difference of the uh, of the methods. So one of the the, the 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 first one example, which is now commonly used, especially when we talk about the medicine. Uh, colleges. It's linking patient safety education with the traditional medical and nursing school. For example, in the nursing, when they talk about obstetrics, they focus on, for example, how are the newborn baby identified to their mother so they don't mix up between the babies with different parents. This is one of the really important safety concern because this, someone will ask, so this is not really a safety issue, it's a it safety issue because ultimately we'll end up with a lot of problems, psychological problems, uh, problems within the parents about that, that. So this is within, when they're teaching obstetrics, they told about this. Are they mentioned as patient safety in specific or just general? This is what will be different from college to college. Also we'll talk about the surgery and there is a specific initiative by the WHO focus on surgery, but here we talk about academic. So if patient need blood transfuse, there should be a checking process. So are they teaching that in the, in the, during the surgery uh, rotation or surgery time for teaching or surgery course or not? So this is not stand alone, but this is part of. So if you have this, is that enough or not? So you need to ask yourself what your learning objective of the in the in the in the in the program that you have ethics which is now most of the patient safety courses or topics are taught in ethics because this is some colleges they say where about the patient safety we're following the credits we cannot add more so they put it as part of the ethics so usually ask how the patients speak up about the right when someone lost their their parent, one of their his parent or her parent due to a medical error, so some people they just silent and they say that's that's happened, but some people they didn't need to know that if there is medical error happened, they need to speak loud because they will prevent another medical record. So this is just an example of the of the where the linking the patient safety education within a, a, a course that already made. So this is an example of how to build a, a curriculum. Another example is to focus on the other parts of what you call domains or competencies. So we talk about the knowledge. We need to think about the knowledge of uh, the students their performance, their attitude. So are, are these measurable within our curriculum or not? So the, when you talk about broad knowledge, they will really need to understand that patient identification mix up could occur, that this situation could increase and there is a need to specific uh, knowledge or the information by the student to know this is a, a considered a patient safety topic and preventable patient safety topic because they will need to make further uh, efforts to prevent that. 
This is knowledge as, as just knowledge. Some applied knowledge, for example, and the and the and the blood donor that we really need to that the, 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 the transfusion error could happen. So we need to, we should know, apply the knowledge that we have to have a specific system to avoid mix up the blood transfusion. This also should be part of the, of the curriculum. And the performance, it's really important that to apply that, to demonstrate that, for example, when you take blood, blood from, the, from, the, from the patients, you will ask the patient, what is your name? Uh, what is your ID number? Uh, what is your blood, blood type? Even you have this information, but this just confirmation. Again, this is how you teach the students in the health colleges. There's also a style of curriculum called integration or integrated curriculum. And this is, it's applied mainly in nursing colleges. Uh, because they have topics on some pharmacy and medicine, so they have some to topics, and these topics, it's 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 not necessarily to be standalone course, but it could be part of the of the uh, of the of the uh, standalone course. For example, minimize infection through improved infection control. This could be part of microbiology, could be part of infection disease uh, course, could be part of clinical placement or skill training. So. You choose which one if you don't want to have patient safety stand along course and you put the, these, these topics from patient safety. Also improving medication safety. This is for, for pharmacy, for example, or for medicine, it will be all the health colleges. So it's about part of the pharmacology course, therapeutic course, or any course that taught by especially the pharmacy colleges. Being an effective team player as part, one of the very important safety topics part, uh, topic, this can be, as communication uh, skill course or emergency disasters training or orientation program or any course that you think this should be there. That's not listed to the, the one that you are seeing. And also introduction, what is patient safety? This could be as a part of introduction to clinical environment or clinical skills, or even as part of ethics as it's now most of the uh, ethics uh, courses that including this, this, this definition. This is again, this is one of the technology, this is one of the ways that could be part of that. Another integrated, uh, when you're teaching the patient safety and through different years, each year that you're focused on a specific topic. For example, year one, you're teaching about patient safety as a concept, as a knowledge. And then later on, this is through different way of delivery, either like problem-based learning or by lecturing or different way of, of delivery format. In year two, you will focus on human factors, a system, a complexity of patient care, because the student is getting more mature and mature during the years, and even to learn how to prevent the error. Year three, you will talk about the having as, as a teamwork, as a player, talking about infection control, because now you're talking about more clinically oriented. And for year four, talk about uh, uh, the, the understanding of clinical risk. We talk about improving medication safety and et cetera. Again, this is a guide for you. Do you need to follow it as, as this is? No, but this is really help you. you. If you follow it, this will be excellent for you. But you could, you have your own way. And this is just an example of including the delivery methods, like problem-based learning, patient safety case, patient safety activity, and there are a lot of examples uh, because of the, the time that I will not be able to, to mention all of that, but uh, it's really uh, helpful uh, if you refer to the, to, the, to the guidance because it gives you some example. When you use the clinical skills, when you use the patient safety case, when you use, when you use the lecture, so all this is really helping you uh, uh, among the like study, uh, building your curriculum in the university. And this is blueprint. What do you mean by blueprint? That's mean it's how you're gonna assess your curriculum. Like in year one, you talk about patient safety, year two, about, year two talk about healthcare system, communication, and year three, you talk about the teamwork, uh, engaging safe patient care, year four, talk about medication safety. So all this information, it's really give you a guide so where you can teach your patient safety. And in patient safety and other health sector, we usually use Miller Triangle. And Miller Triangle is really help you to, to, to assess the cognitive, cognitive 
uh, information or, 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 or evaluation and also the behavior evaluation of your, of your, of your students. So start with knows if they know the information, if they know this is a patient safety concern or not, and this is you can test them or knows how if if that if this is if this is information true or not about patient safety. And this is usually we do it by exam, either like direct exam or multiple choice or essay and etc. The important it show shows how, for example, how during simulation, how you're gonna prevent uh, um, um, uh, blood transfusion to the to, to the to the wrong patient. And this is usually under supervision by the uh, supervisor or advisor. How to prevent to do a surgery in the wrong place. And this is by simulation. The last one, which is the top one, does the students by alone will do what they need to do in occupation safety. And this is one of the uh, methods of delivery or the uh, uh, evaluation of the student that's really help you when you design your curriculum and the uh, patient safety curriculum. And this is just some of the example of competencies. I'm not going to talk about in detail, but just a project here to you say, okay, so if I want to assess the competency of the safe patient care, for example, safe patient care risk and prevention, how can I assess that? So you have to do it by multiple choice uh, question or uh, modified, uh, uh, multiple modi uh, modified question evaluation. So this is uh, this is one of the questions that you could ask, or you could do it through a say, or you could do it by, uh, for example, so directly supervising the students themselves. Also, there's a lot of examples. For example, the medication safety, you do, should do it by OSCE, portfolio, multiple choice of question, uh, do it by the also a say. So all these examples just to help you in building your curriculum. So, for the question and last question, what college you think is involving patient safety course more? Which one of these colleges you think currently are really involved in patient safety more? Is it medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, nursing, applied medical sciences? So please select one and I will give you, if you can give them more time to answer, I would like to see all the people reply to this question. Um, I did not, add all of the above because you will answer all that. But from the experience, there is one college from these colleges are really uh, applying the patient safety more compared with other uh, colleges. So please answer uh, the question that next to you. So I have 150. Majority says nursing. It seems that we have many nurses here, uh, followed by medicine, then uh, applied medical science, then pharmacy, and last one, dentist. That's what I think we don't have a lot of dentists here, which is really important to have uh, patient safety among dentistry colleges. So nursing, yes, they are applying the patient safety as integrated uh, patient safety was one of the advantage. However, the most college uh, applying patient safety is really medicine colleges. Me college of, colleges of medicine are really start, at least here in Saudi Arabia or even worldwide, are really focusing on patient safety more compared to other colleges. Either they do, but there is a variation or there are variations, but medicine, they really do uh, all that. So. These health, health colleges, medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, nursing, applied medical sciences, public health and health informatics here in Saudi Arabia, we have all these colleges. We find that the most colleges applying medicine followed by nursing and pharmacy. Dentistry, applied medical sciences, public health and health informatics, unfortunately are not really yet there with that. So hopefully in the near future, we'll see that, especially at least, at least in, in, in my country. So. Here in Saudi Arabia, most of the colleges are really teaching patient safety uh, in their curriculum. Um, however, there are different ways of incorporating patient safety. It doesn't mean that they have their standalone course, but at least they are teaching some part of that. Usually they are part of another subject, but some colleges actually they have their own patient safety course. Uh, the most commonly course that is as part of is ethics class, 
we have some, again, some colleges, they have stand along course. I'll give you an example in the next slides. Uh, it's, it depends. Some of them they consider as mandatory. Some of them are considered voluntary during the electives. So this is one of the, that. And also some of the colleges, they teach it in professional years. Some of them they teach it uh, in the, also in addition to professional years as an internship years uh, as voluntary rotation. So it depends on the on the on the college. This King Saud University, and this is a very nice graph for the, the, the curriculum starting from the bullet from the down is the year one. So if you go here, you will see the SKI 221 medical professionalism. They're teaching the course uh, for almost um, 10 weeks. Uh, 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 and this is especially for patient safety in, in this year two. This is one of the really good examples that the importance of patient safety among uh, college medicine uh, college at King Saud University. Um, and this is another example from King Abdulaziz University in Jeddah, King Saud in Riyadh, King Abdulaziz University in Jeddah. They are teaching the whole course two hours with patient safety, but they teach in six years, which is the last year before internship. And uh, and they really have a very good program. And they have, they have this description of the course. And if you see the description, they're focusing on the medical errors, human factors, so they focus on the fiction control, the WHO um, 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 challenges. So the really good program they have at the King Abdulaziz University. So if you want to get more information, you can uh, go to the link and get all the information there. So College of Nurses, again, uh, good number of colleges here in Saudi Arabia teaching curriculum, but most of them they are teaching as integrated course, as part of like the system, the core the system. So the, for example, course talk about physiology, anatomy, talk about the nursing foundation, talk about cardiovascular nursing and part of its patient safety in cardiovascular nursing. So it's integrated with that. Also, they some colleges they taught it as part of the course and mainly during the infection control, epidemiology and legal and ethics. And, and I'll give you an example. This was, sorry, I didn't find it in, in English, but I found it in Arabic. Uh, and this is again, King Saud University. They have it on the infection control as a part of that. And this is another university, this is Hyatt University, University of Hyatt, they teach it as under legal, uh, legal, ethical, legal and ethical issue nursing. Here, they teach it in the third years, because it's 300, and here they teach it in the fourth uh, year. So they teach it more advanced, like King Abdulaziz in medicine, but King Saudi, they teach it in second year. We're talking about College of Pharmacy. Uh, because pharmacy in Saudi Arabia is really moving to the uh, from the the traditional bachelor uh, sciences degree to doctor pharmacy degree, so a lot of focusing on on the um, what they call the behavioral sciences, uh, one of them patient safety and also pharmacovigilance. Uh, this could be a full time mandatory course, full time elective course, partial mandatory or partial elective uh, course. So in College of Pharmacy, actually only one college, they're teaching patient safety as a part of patient ethics and patient safety. It's again, it's not stand alone, but at least they're teaching. However, we find some colleges are actually teaching pharmacovigilance. They consider it as a part of patient safety. Uh, is that enough for them? Actually, no. They, they, when we talk about safety, we need to read at least some of the information, including pharmacovigilance. In one study we have done, we found that uh, only six colleges, among almost 20 or 30 colleges, or the colleges, they are teaching pharmacovigilance. Uh, three mandatory courses and three elective. So we talk about three mandatory courses only. So there is a lot of movement or need to, 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 to think about including more from microvigilance in this college of pharmacy that we are having here. So this is an example of this King Faisal uh, University as law and ethics pharmacy practice. Uh, and also if you see down they teach it and they, it could be they teach it in pharmacopidemiology, but here they teach it in the, in the law and ethics and pharmacy. And this is another one. And this is the teaching in pharmacoepidemiology and, and research methodology, and they teach the patient safety uh, or the pharmacovigilance and uh, pharmacovigilance here. So 
I'm almost finishing. Sorry for being long. Uh, so this, there are some future plans here in Saudi Arabia uh, because a lot of colleges really, uh, we talk about all the health colleges, uh, planning to update their curriculum. Uh, again, there's a lot, of, a lot of advancement here in Saudi Arabia in education and continuous actually improvement and patient safety will be part of that and, and focus on patient safety as a sole a mandatory course uh, because of the importance of that. However, some colleges, not all colleges, we have again almost 37 university, government university. Some colleges, they, uh, they have this considered to be with other courses, especially when talking about epidemiology and ethics. But again, these all need to be changes. Um, some of them, they want to be integrated with the college courses. When these here, we talk about the nurses. Nurses now, they're really focusing to be integrated. However, I think they will really change it to be as, as on because they will not have enough materials to, to, to cover that, I mean, within the college. Uh, it's also be part, and this is one of the good example to be part as elective rotation, which is excellent. And the good thing is that the Saudi Commission for Health Specialities are really forcing into teaching this patient safety. Indirect, they are not really forcing them, but indirect, because most of the exams now, you know, the healthcare professional, after they finish, they need to take the exams and to pass it to practice. So many questions in the exam are really in patient safety. They really need to be taught in the college to be, uh, to be, to be, to be, to be uh, including in the curriculum and then to be passed the exam. So in summary, Sorry. In summary, there is a belief that's important of the uh, of the uh, patient safety to be part of the college curriculum, and this is one of the things that's really important. Uh, as we speak, there are variety of involvement, involvement of patient safety in health colleges. So, as I mentioned, some of them are part of the course, some of them uh, as as a course, some of them are still not there. Some of them as integrated. So there's a really good until now, but again, there is really need to move improvement. Medicine college is really focusing more, as I mentioned before, and really in, mo moving more forward and forward. And there are a lot of effort by, by other colleges that they really need to involve more patient safety as a sole uh, course and mandatory course. This is not only need for Saudi Arabia, but it's really need for for, uh, for uh, all the uh, countries. And we did actually studies, including all Arab countries, including almost 191 academic institutions. Unfortunately, there are no patient safety, there were few actually patient safety courses in these, in these, uh, in these universities. Um, Saudi Arabia is really good examples, but again, we really need to also be more and more and to, to update our uh, our curriculum uh, here in Saudi Arabia. So at the end, I would like to thank you all. Uh, shukran for your time. I'm sorry I exceed my time, but I just want to make sure that I deliver all the information. And again, if you have any question, if you have any concern, if you have any comments, this is my Twitter account and this is my email. Please feel free to contact me uh, at any time. And back to you, Dr. Fakhar. I'm sorry again for, for taking more time. Thank you very much, Dr. Samer. Always your presentations are um, very informative and also speaking, um, very enthusiastic. Um, all the nursing here are thanking you for putting them in most of your slides because they believe that uh, patient safety is their responsibility with the other healthcare practitioners, of course. We have a few questions and I'm happy to see one of them, which is the one I will start with because it's very important, I think, and are asking you, can we consider patient safety the cornerstone of the uh, international patient safety goal or not? As international safety goal, yes, actually patient safety is, is really now, uh, I'm not sure if you're aware that there is initiative by the WHO, which is called patient safety 10 years challenge. It start 2021 until 2030. And uh, there are a lot of efforts uh, on patient safety. It is actually the, the milestone because when you fix the patient safety, everything around it, it will, it, will, it will be fixed. And that's what's why, why would it need to be, to be uh, the corner, or the major part of education, the major part of curriculum, even during the university or college years. And even after uh, graduation, there is also need for, for, 
for continuing education on this part, because a lot of improvement, as I mentioned at the first um, my, beginning of my slides, that it's really, we consider it an immature science. So a lot of development, a lot of improvement in patient safety, which is excellent. That will help us to, to improve uh, our uh, environment or our institution here in Saudi Arabia or even outside. So yes, it is. And there are a lot of work that really need to do as healthcare professionals or people, uh, not only people working in patient safety, but actually any healthcare professionals. And as you mentioned about the nurses, the excellent nurses, because uh, nurses are really one of the, the profession that's seeing or directly dealing with the patients. And there's a lot of effort on them to deliver, to educate the patient about patient safety and also to, to, to help with other healthcare team uh, to improve patient safety or our patients. I agree with you 100% because most of the time uh, the, the patient spends their time with the nursing rather than pharmacists or, phys or physicians because they are the one to take care of them. So I believe uh, that they are the core um, of uh, the patient safety um, system in any hospital. Um, I, I also need to comment on something when you started your presentation talking about the cardiovascular diseases and uh, how burden is it on, on the budget of our country. And I do agree with you that it's more than 25% um, uh, that's uh, of course uh, the cost of it in Saudi Arabia and uh, in the Gulf countries. Um, but we still um, lack lots of studies taking care of the patient safety in these kind of diseases, either diabetes, cardiovascular, and so on. What's your recommendation for that? Yes, Dr. Far, thank you for bringing this up because it's really one of the really um, things that we're lacking, not only in Saudi Arabia or even it's actually worldwide. Uh, the reason why, because we are, we don't have really enough people that, uh, actually many, many factors, but one of the major part is really, we don't have really enough people to, to are experts in this area and or to, to conduct the studies. Uh, the other reason, as I mentioned before, there's a lack of data. And one of the things that really, we really need to focus on. My recommendation actually is really, uh, to build teams within within hospitals, within uh, institutions, uh, to work together to conduct the studies, especially in patient safety. Uh, one hand will not work. Uh, it's really important to work together. And here, when I say together, talk about different profession, not like medicine together or, or nursing or pharmacy or industry. We really need to work together uh, because patient safety is really advantage that it's really multidisciplinary team work. So it's building team within the institution. This is one of the things that we really need to focus on um, to work and to conduct different type of research, uh, work with even with the students to involve them in the in the uh, in the in the in the uh, conducting this research for different reasons to enhance the environment of patient safety with them and also to build them or to like. Uh, make them ready to conduct their own studies when they graduate, when they work, when they work, uh, because uh, uh, it's 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 important to uh, to find what is the problem that we have because there is a need to know what's the problem. As you mentioned, there are a lot we have lack of information uh, in the area of of patient safety. So all this information is really important. Right. And it's also supporting the uh, recommendation that came to our uh, questions from the audience. Why don't we involve pa uh, students in the patient safety? I think you already covered this and this is excellent. And yeah. the other question that we really want to work on is how does improving the curriculum and the development of the curriculum will change uh, the faculty outcome and in the end, of course, the patient safety uh, in the other way? Excellent question. Yeah, uh, the 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 um, when we change the curriculum, we actually we start with the with the uh, the uh, the faculty themselves because we know that not all faculty are, are aware or expert in this area, which is fine. Uh, Usually we start with the faculty. They will re realize the importance of the patient safety. When we apply the change, and this will not change the patient safety itself, but also will change the, the curriculum altogether because involving patient safety will open the, the faculty and even the students within the other courses. Uh, let's say, for example, if I teach uh, the uh, importance of the checking the patient before going to the surgery in, in the College of Medicine, 
when I, te when I teach in patient safety, this is important. The student, when he or she study the surgery course, this information will get to wait, okay. First, before I do the surgery, okay, I need to know how to do the surgery. But before that, I need to make sure this, 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 uh, this uh, patient, I need to show this area that they need to do the surgery around it. So it's very really important, uh, will, will, in, will in, enlarge or increase their way of thinking, not only taking at the science. Unfortunately, some, or let's say the majority of the students, they take the information just to memorize the information and they really don't think. The patient safety course, it's really good that open people mind or students mind to think about because about how are, how are they gonna do with the patient? Because most of it is really more of understanding than memorizing. So we'll help the curriculum, we'll help the, 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 the other courses. It also will help the, uh, the uh, faculty or, or health um, sorry, the uh, college uh, faculties to to understand uh, not only their courses but also the the uh, the uh, the, uh, the the other courses with the patient safety. The last point it's really helped to have like multidisciplinary team. And the good thing that also I advise the colleges is to have patient safety as interprofessional course that the healthcare the health college students they teach to they study it together because at the end, after that, they work together toward patient safety. Great, excellent. I think you really answered it very well. And uh, one of the questions they're asking us, which of the healthcare practitioners um, uh, are uh, having the risk of hazards and why? Actually, we cannot say specific particular healthcare professional have the hazard because when you say like for medicine or physician or colleague physician, they have hazard from different sources, like during surgery, during dealing with the patient, uh, giving the patient the, the medication, uh, pharmacist, during like preparation, uh, the like chemo drugs, you know, or, or the pharmacist like who's working as around, dealing with the patient, dealing with the clinics, also that the, the risk of the, uh, like when they prescribe the medicine, medicine to their patient. This is, this is again from the so pharmacy. You mean everybody. So everybody. everybody like, there is no particular uh, healthcare profession. Everybody is really at, at the risk. I think the hazard becomes uh, most important to the patient, maybe. Or maybe oh, the yes. question Definitely. yeah, comes yeah. like, who, who commits more, maybe, uh, mistakes? This will take us to a question. Uh, are we going to disclose or dis uh, discuss the medication mistakes? And is patient safety part of that? Or is patient safety applying it will decrease those kind of medical uh, mistakes? Yeah, actually, this is one of the like human factors, uh, and this is one of the things that they taught in the discourse that when they uh, disclose or when they need to disclose disclose the the medical mistake, and this is really important. And yes, it is, and um, and this is one of the areas that they should be focused on uh, because some of some of the mistake could be like even if it happened, could be prevented the complication from that. So yes, it's part of the patient safety course or curriculum. The, the other question, which is, I think, related to Al-Markaz al-Saudi, Salamat al-Marda, his question was, if I am in a ward, I'm, I'm a nurse working in a ward, and I need to deliver a patient that's coming from either Al-Batin, Al-Jarah, al hazard from isolation, what's the, 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 the way to do that, and who to be blamed if there's any mistakes that happened from uh, patient I, safety profile? I cannot talk on behalf of patient safety center. Uh, but this is dependent on the, on, the, on the regulation within the Ministry of Health or the institution they are belong to. So each hospital or each institution, they have their own regulation to when they do with such cases or how to do to deal with that. And this is, should be uh, delivered to the all healthcare workers when they start working on the hospital during the orientation. This is one of the things that they really should go back to the policy or regulation department and the institution to follow with that. So I, even the, the, the Saudi Patient Safety Center, again, I'm not talking on their behalf, but I think this is dependent on the institution they are belonging I, to. I think this is an alarm for us, Dr. Thamer and me, maybe we can work together with the uh, Patient Safety Center. Um, yeah. about uh, doing a national, maybe, a pathway or guideline in handling such kind of patients and yeah, to have it applied in different centers. So maybe they could be the lead for that. Yes, definitely. Yes, so actually, 
Actually, one of, uh, I believe, like again, this is my opinion, not reflected to Saudi. One of my, um, I believe that the Saudi Patient Safety Center was really should have like a regulation and, and policies in, in such cases and to align with different healthcare sector and how to apply that. Yes, definitely. Great. And this uh, question is nice because you talked about ethics during your presentation. Yeah. And the question is, first of all, is the patient safety uh, guidelines or instructions the same worldwide? If I learn it in Saudi Arabia, it's the same one that I'm going to apply it, for example, in Canada, the same I'm going to apply it, for example, in Egypt. The other part of the question, what about the specific ethics in each area with dealing, of course, with patient safety? So when we talk about patient safety uh, uh, regulation guidelines, as general uh, like frame, they're almost same or similar. However, each country, they have their own um, needs, their own regulation uh, and, and ethics. Uh, and, uh, and this is really different. Uh, for example, you know, the, 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 for example, the Islamic regulation, they have their specific own regulation that, uh, that also uh, my not similar to other different countries. So there's in general, yes, but there's each country, they have their own um, uh, guidelines and regulation that's applied to that country. Okay, great. The, there's also very nice uh, actually comment here. You want us to advise how to improve the patient safety. What's your okay. advice is for that? How to improve patient safety. First, from uh, starting from us as to, uh, to teach ourselves what is patient safety. Second, we need to work together. Uh, one of the concerns that we have, we really we don't, we don't, we don't uh, work together with patient safety. So this question has different level. Are we talking about individual? Are we talking about an institution? Are we talking about the country? So it's really depends. So if we talk about individual, um, we need to like how to improve medication safety, oh, sorry, patient safety. It's really uh, starting from yourself and try the best to protect your patient. If you talk about an institution, they really need to work as an institution by different departments to apply patient safety. And it's like ministries, they should have specific departments on patient safety, they should have regulation guidelines. So there are a lot of work working together as to to work to, to to approach the patient safety goal that we have, so it's really uh, it could be a long answer with that, but this is just in in, in, in brief. Doctor Mohammed, agree with you. He said uh, we should do like, for example, in the code blue, special traffic to reach the patient, a special pathway for the AR or the place where the patients are there. So I think part of the advice is, is to have like a special conditions for patients who really need our service and time is an issue for them. So um, my other question to you is that what is, that they're talking about very important thing now, <clears throat> special area, is there's a special recommendations for patient safety, for example, in the ER, special uh, recommendations for the critical care and so on. So is there a specific recommendations for that or is it general? Yes, uh, this is a very good point. Uh, patient safety is a really general term, but, we really need to focus on patient safety in each area. we we'll talk about, for example, ER uh, uh, safety. This is, it should be an ER safety guideline specific for patient working safety, or sort of healthcare profession working safety, patient who is going to the patients, uh, to ER, for example, or ICUs. We should also have the um, infection control and patient safety. Uh, or we also have, should have, for example, people in cardiovascular. And when you talk about the medication, they should have the medication safety. When you talk about the nurse, so it's really specialized area. When you talk about patient safety, that's really general term. And actually some colleges, they have patient safety course and also they have specialized course, for example, medication safety or nursing uh, for example, um, IV, how to deal with patient IV safety and infection safety. So all this information, or even surgery safety. So it's, it's, it's why I, I did not mention that because we are still in the beginning to apply patient safety. And then we could go deep and deep when we have the, the, the basic of patient safety. I think also there's a question here, which is like a little bit of a tricky question. We said to involve student in the patient safety plan and also part of our recommendation is to put it on the curriculum of pharmacy. 
but he's asking, are we able, or do you recommend involving those patients, uh, sorry, those students in a critical area like uh, infections control? Would this um, actually um, affect the rules of restriction and isolation of having a lot of students there? Or what's your recommendation for that? I, I believe involving students is really one of the very beneficial point to do uh, in, in like in your college or in your institution. The reason why you are investing in students, they're very young people, smart people, they're really very uh, ambitious to help. Uh, what you need to do actually is this mission for example, isolation of COVID-19 patient, we have risky patient. It's really what you need to do is giving them a week or like orientation daily to tell them the rule, what they need to do and they need to follow. Of course, you need to supervise them. I mentioned to you the Miller Triangle to apply the, 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 the different part of it. Uh, the students are really beneficial. And they will help you. As, as you mentioned about research, they're very good, um, like help and research. So uh, I do it myself, actually. I also um, include students in my uh, in my project and my work because they're really beneficial to me and to the project and to them later on uh, to to apply the, the patient safety uh, rules or regulations. So yes, definitely. Uh, also, how does the culture diversity? affect applying the patient safety? This is the, another question that we received now. Yeah, cultural diversity, it's, it's the band. Um, uh, I don't think it's affect a lot, but it could bring also different experience from different culture. For example, let me give you an example. Uh, maybe you know, Dr. Fakhar, I work with the, the National Drug Policy uh, Research at China. Yeah. And China, they have unique uniqueness that's believed that, um, uh, for example, IV medication is more effect than oral medication. And they all prefer to have IV. And this is, again, this cultural belief. And this is could understand how we prevent patient safety or medication error or, 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 medica or harm from medication during that. So having a different culture is really help you to understand but I don't think it's 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 will affect negatively on that. But and 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 I think it's I see it as a positive point. Well, what is who's responsible for the multidisciplinary team for applying patient safety? Yeah, this is a depend on the institution. It could be by like College of Medicine, College of Pharmacy. Uh, some of the some of the universities they have what to call them um, um, the vice rectorate for the health specialties. So, or vice presidents for health specialities. So, this person is really coordinating all the effects. So, it's it's not very specific, uh, like college. It's the the most mature college, the most informative college, or the, if there is center, they will lead, take the lead. Okay, great. My question also to you, doctor. Maybe that would be our last question for today, in about patient safety and Saudi Arabia. Where do we stand? That's a good question. We actually, we are, we are at the bend. We are good at our like area. We're considered from the best, but again, we, we are missing a lot that we really need to focus on. We need to develop. We need to, uh, to work again together, different uh, institution, different uh, sectors uh, to improve more and more in patient safety. We are doing, we are, we are working, but I think we really need to do more uh, about that. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Thamer, for your uh, very informative uh, presentation. Uh, we got a lot of uh, positive comments from our audience. Thank you for being part of uh, the um, Merkaz Saudi Salamat al Marda Saudi Patient Safety Center uh, series of uh, patient safety uh, lectures. Uh, me, myself, I learned a lot. Thank you so much. And I do really support that we can uh, involve uh, the curriculums of patient safety in the colleges of the healthcare practitioners, it's very important. If you don't teach them how to do it, they will never be able to do it when they are a graduate and they are in the career math. And you cannot- Thank you, thank you, you, cannot, you. Thank you so much. And you also- for, for your for your time and uh, having uh, like very, very positive comments. I would like to thank the participants, over 600 participants to take this uh, like 
time and you know some countries is after uh, like 6 7 p.m uh, really uh, this is this is when you see this number of people at this time are really uh, attending this topic they really need to change something within the institution of the country really thanks to all of them and thanks to the Saudi Safety Center for inviting me and having me to give this presentation again thanks to Dr. Fahad Thank you. And now it's time to announce that the uh, time is open now for uh, registering in the uh, um, Saudi Patient Safety uh, Conference, which will be uh, held uh, on the 28th, 29th of November. They opened now the registration. We are there to uh, announce that for you. So please try to register and attend. You can see now um, lots of important speakers will be involved in. You will learn a lot from it. Uh, it's open for uh, everybody to register. And the Patient Safety Center has a very big effort to provide us with a timely reports and uh, topics that will help us in improving the patient safety in our practice. Uh, me, myself, Fakhar Razwer al the president of the Cardiology Clinical Pharmacy in the Saudi Heart Association, I want to thank you very much for attending. Our attendees, without you, would not be uh, succeeding uh, this webinar. Thank you very much for the organizing uh, committee and, of course, for uh, Ustada Hiba for the great effort you did, and uh, Dr. Turki for the help and the IT people who really made this happen. Uh, glad to be with you and glad to be, inshallah, participant uh, in the coming, uh, inshallah, series and conferences. Thank you very much and hope to see you very soon. Thank you.